gravity is old in the sense it has been around for a long time. We notice it every day. But as theoretical physicists, we're still mesmerized by it and we have many puzzles that we don't understand yet. And I think we live actually in an exciting time. I mean, there, Newton is famous for writing down uh, his equations for gravity. Then uh, Einstein, uh, a century ago, has a theory, had a theory that replaced Newton's or at least contained it. And now we are in the middle of another, uh, I think it's a revolution in, in, in theoretical physics that we have again, uh, well, in the middle of developing a new view of gravity, a new way of thinking about gravity, and indeed also trying to solve puzzles that we have with thinking about it. Um, so Newton indeed has uh, wrote down his equations for uh, gravity, how it works, that's uh, 1 over the distance squared with Newton's uh, constant and the mass is in there. And he describes very successfully how the planets orbit the sun. And when you calculate using Newton's law, uh, how the velocities of uh, planets behave as a function of the distance from the sun, uh, you, they will go slower. Uh, and that's precisely what you observe. So this plot is uh, the theory uh, versus the experiment where we see the planets nicely lined on, on what Newton predicted. So Newton's theory is very well tested. Although there were tiny problems that Newton had uh, in explaining, uh, I mean, if we would apply his theory to say what happened to the inner uh, planet, which was Mercury, that had slight deviations. Uh, actually, Newton would have predicted that the orbits were close orbits, but what really happens is that the orbit circles around a little bit. This is exaggerated, by the way, but every time it goes around it, there's a little difference in the angle. And that is, uh, can be explained with Newton's theory if we assume that there would be one other more planet uh, closer to the sun, hidden there with us, for us not to be able to see it, which is called Vulcan. People searched for it, but it was not found. And indeed, now we know that this is explained by Einstein's theory of general relativity. So this was something that didn't follow from Newton's theory. Now I'm going to go make a jump and actually go to another object, which is not the solar system, but something we live in as well, which is called the galaxy or the Milky Way. And it has some similar properties in the sense that most of the matter is in the middle and there are stars going around it. And then you can uh, ask, well, does gravity uh, work the same way there? And then if you look, uh, you find that something really goes uh, different than what Newton and later also Einstein uh, would have predicted. Uh, what I showed you for the planets, namely that the velocities would uh, diminish when you go as a, as a function of the distance, that would indeed have been uh, what Newton described or, or, or Einstein if you take all the matter that we see, which is in the center, and you go out to the stars far out, you would expect that the velocities go down because otherwise they would move too fast and they would simply fly out of orbit. That's not what's happening. We see that the velocity stays constant and the, the stars are going way too fast to be able to hold gravity, having them <coughs> hold together. And that's also here in Andromeda. And this is something that has been seen in many, many galaxies. And there's only one way to explain it, if you believe that the Einstein and the, and the Newton equations are correct, namely assuming there's more force to keep it all together. And this is the phenomenon we call dark matter. People um, have to assume that there's more matter in, in galaxies than we can see, uh, which has to produce the extra gravity. And not just a little bit. Uh, in our galaxy, it's about 30 times more than the matter that we can see. And that's not just a tiny planet that you put next to the sun to explain a little deviation. That's a big modification of really what we currently can see. But we believe, and actually that's most, what most physicists believe, that Einstein's theory and, and, and also uh, Newton's theory is correct still here, uh, and therefore there must be dark matter. Maybe it's not so simple. Indeed, the dark matter then should be some uh, distribution of mass around this galaxy in a, a giant, what we call a halo. Uh, but if what explains it? Is it some particle we haven't found yet that's sort of making up all of this mass? Or is there another explanation? Now, I already mentioned Einstein. I mean, Einstein uh, describes uh, gravity in a very different way than Newton. Uh, Einstein thought about space and time uh, as uh, having a, a geometry like, uh, well, the Earth is round, we know. I mean, also space-time can be curved according to Einstein. And Einstein wrote down equations 
that describe how space and time curve when we put in matter. So instead of thinking about uh, the force like Newton did, where you have just two masses that attract each other according to some given law, he thought about the motion of uh, matter through space-time, but that matter indeed curves the space-time and therefore the motion of objects uh, are not going in straight lines, but goes like, say, the orbits of the planets around the Sun. And he had made a number of predictions, and many actually, that uh, have indeed also been uh, confirmed. And one of the first ones, well, I already mentioned uh, uh, Mercury, but also uh, the fact that light bends. So if space is curved, you can look at light rays coming from far, and you see uh, that when they would be coming in a straight line, you would see it at point B. But if it curves, you would actually see, well, actually, to be honest, if it's sitting there, the light would come to us, and we see as if it comes from point B, but actually the light has been curved from something that's behind the sun. So you can actually see things happening behind the sun because the light curves. And this can be indeed observed, and I'll show some pictures in a, in a little while. Another prediction that's sort of famous in the last months is that uh, gravity uh, also can have waves, just like light has waves, gravity also has waves, and this is a prediction of <coughs> Einstein, uh, where, uh, for instance, uh, this is uh, what has, had been observed recently by LIGO, that if two uh, black holes, very heavy objects, can collide together, they send ripples into uh, the shape or the geometry of space-time, and they propagate outwards to us, and we can see those really little deformations of, uh, of space, here on Earth by measuring distances very carefully. And indeed, this confirmation that gravity waves exist is a, is a spectacular, uh, well, of course, uh, verification of Einstein's theory of general relativity. But I already mentioned some cases where it doesn't really work uh, that well. And uh, so this uh, problem of dark matter actually can use Einstein's theory also to verify this uh, idea. So I mentioned that light is being bent uh, by gravity. So when we have an object that's behind a massive, uh, well, in this case, it's some, some galaxy or some, some cluster or something that's in between, then any object that's behind it will send its light around the object in front of it in such a way that we can see the same image from different angles. So here we see actually something behind it and it forms a ring in the sense the light can go from all ways, all sides around it and this is called the Einstein ring and it's a beautiful confirmation that gravity sort of works like a lens. Just with lenses we also know we can bend light and you can form images. So this is not what it looks like, it's really something that's behind it where the light has been bent around it. So it's quite beautiful, this can be seen with for instance the Hubble telescope. And we can indeed figure out how much mass there should in, be in there, because by looking at how the light comes towards us, we, uh, by the, solving the equations, we can see how much matter should be in the middle. And so this would be indeed a group of galaxies or stars, and then, actually this is a galaxy in this case, and there's some other galaxy far out, and we see its image being distorted uh, when we look at it in, in, on Earth. And this is what such an image would look like, so here, if you look carefully, you see that there is this group of galaxies, but you see these little lines, which are sort of like circles with the same shape and the same color. You see actually there is something being distorted as if there's a lens in front of it. But this is just gravity doing the work. But if we then figure out how much matter should be in here, how much mass, it's much more than we can see. So it's again evidence that there must be dark matter in this uh, or more gravity at least, inside this cluster of galaxies. And uh, again, something we don't understand by just looking at the amount of matter that we see. And this is uh, what's called strong lensing in the sense that it really is uh, yeah, a lens effect where you see deformations of uh, the, the galaxies as we, we, we watch the, the, the image. There's also something called weak lensing, which is a where you look at very tiny deformations and you can even figure out then where all the matter is sitting and also the dark matter is sitting. And these are images uh, which they color in where you can see dark matter in the blue and the ordinary matter that we know about which is red. 
And the interesting thing is that the dark matter is sort of surrounding here the, the ordinary matter, but here is being even separated from the two. Uh, 